So a year ago, unemployment in the U.S. was right around 10 percent. Today, it's hovering around 6 percent. What we've learned, I think, during the pandemic is that being an employee is one of the riskiest ways to make money. And uh, with me today is my new friend, Steve Rosenberg. Uh, Steve, great to have you on the show. I appreciate you having me, Tom. Thank you very much. So Steve is a full-time airline pilot and uh, a part-time investor. And I thought it'd be great to have uh, somebody real who's actually doing this on the show. So Steve, what made you get into investing in the first place? Uh, clearly, you still like your job. So what got you into investing right off the bat? What, what precipitated me to get out of the realm of just being an employee was uh, 9-11. So it was, it was a tragedy that happened. We all remember 2001. And that was the day that I realized that my safe, secure job as an airline pilot was not safe. And it was not secure because 48 hours after the towers fell, I got delivered a furlough notice. That's when my should became a must. And I realized that I needed to figure out another strategy very, very quickly. So it wasn't necessarily a choice, but uh, it was something that I had to do. So you like being um, a full-time airline pilot, um, but how do you even start with the idea of becoming a part-time investor? For me, it started by reading and educating myself because being, I was 25 years old when I got hired with my first airline. That's all I ever wanted to do was to have a job as an airline pilot, probably like someone else that they have a specialty in their field. And it was very quickly, uh, came to my attention uh, that the skill set I had was only valuable in an airplane. So I realized that I could not even drive a truck because I didn't have the qualifications. And so I started looking to see what is it that other people do that are successful? Like I had no idea. And everything was somehow tied to real estate. At one form or another, books I read, and you know, I did the Rich Dad, Poor Dad and the whole series and everything. And I just, I thought, okay, this resonates with me. And it wasn't really the fact that I could do it part-time. It was a matter of understanding the value of leverage and being understanding the difference, the fulcrum point of being an employee and, you know, being at now in a furlough line with 50,000 other pilots or understanding that I can control my destiny. Let, let's talk about controlling your destiny because I actually think that's a big deal right now. We have uh, the U.S. government who frankly wants to control everybody's lives. Yep. Um, it, it appears right there. They want more, more entitlements, more people on more benefits. Um, and that's going on all over the world, right? I mean, you see in France, yep. Uh, they're requiring vaccine cards to get a cup, cup of coffee. So there's a lot of other forces trying to control us. Why would you want to be in control of yourself? Everybody has a defining moment in their life. And I'll tell you a personal one of mine. Um, I remember the days after 9-11, I'd already been given my pink slip and I was basically waiting for my exit um, from the airline. And if you remember during the time frame of 9-11 at the actual happening of it, all the aircraft, wherever they were in the world, had to circle and land where they were. So they dispatched all the flight crews around the world to pick up these airplanes and reposition them. And I will, I will never forget this. And again, this is one of those moments that I have. It gives me the chills thinking about it. But I remember walking through, I believe it was Denver Airport at the time. And if you've ever walked through a terminal, airport terminal with no life, there's no existence of everybody. It's a very huge, cavernous, eerie building and I remember looking outside at the tarmac and seeing all these aircraft parked in a jigsaw puzzle because they were just trying to fit them somewhere on the, air, on the airport. And I remember looking out and thinking to myself, my life as I know it will never be the same again. Um, I, I had a similar situation. Um, when I, um, <laughs> I left a big CPA firm, um, not at, on my choice, okay? Um, they brought somebody else in, they liked them better. And uh, I decided to start my own CPA firm. I, I, instead of taking the real estate route, I took the business route. And I just decided after a year, and I was not making very much money after a year, I'm going, I don't care. I remember telling my wife this. I don't care if we make $30,000 a year, if I make $30,000 a year for the rest of my life. I am never going back to work for somebody else. So what kind of education um, for you was what, what was the biggest thing that kind of, um, you know, turned the corner for you and said, okay, now I'm ready. It was me understanding that I didn't know what I needed to know. It was understanding that I didn't understand that having a goal 
and having an end destination of what I wanted to accomplish. We do it all the time. We get in our car, we have an end destination. I get in an airplane. I know where I'm going. I have an end destination. I started buying real estate. I had no end destination. I was buying deals because other people told me they were good deals. I never factored them into data and numbers. And I didn't have a reason I was buying them. The, the biggest moment for me personally was understanding that I had to, I had to be around smarter people. I had to learn to associate with people that were where I wanted to go. To me, that was getting coached, getting mentored. Uh, I was coached and mentored for at least the last 10 years. I still do it today. And I'm just a big believer of realizing that every day, you know, you, you're like a tree, you're either growing or you're dying. And, and every day you have a decision that you can either grow or you can die every single day we wake up. And I've learned that the only way of doing that is having that end, that North star, that end destination and having that why that just is relentless that you are going to get to it. And so for me, that that's what it was for me. And it may sound simple. It wasn't this big prolific thing. It was just understanding that I needed a destination and I didn't have one. And that's why at uh, Wealth Billy, actually, see, we actually start with your dream. We always start with your dream um, because that's the why, right? What is the why there? And it also allows us to quantify, okay, well, if that's true, if that's your dream, what's the cost of that dream? Because people may say, we hear people say, oh, money's not important. Well, that's, we all know that's baloney, right? Um, right. You and I do, because <laughs> everything you, <laughs> things you want, they cost money. Even if it means time and freedom, that costs money. So what we, what we have to start with is we have to go, okay, where are, where are we going? Where are we today? And let's make a plan um, to get there. How did you go about creating your plan? It's a matter of the lifestyle that you want to have. And so people buying houses, it's not four walls and a roof. That is not going to make you happy. And it's definitely not going to make you successful. It's the business model that runs inside of that four walls and the roof. And that business model is dictated by numbers and data. I would say the only reason that I, I feel that I was successful is I took massive action on a daily basis. The naysayers, all the people, I just kept getting up every day. As all of us do, we would get knocked down. I would get lied to, stolen from, all those things. But it didn't phase me. It didn't bother me because I knew I had nothing behind me because I was about to lose my job. I think there's a, a point here where we, we start with our initial why, and then maybe our why gets bigger, and we actually get a bigger purpose. And I think that's where, um, you know, we can expand ourselves and perhaps even go back to what you were talking about, where that's where having a coach or a mentor, somebody who's really driving us can help us expand, you know, and so we can do so much more. Whenever I've coached people or mentored them, I'll say, what, what do you want? What is real estate going to give you? And they'll go on a maybe a five-minute tirade of telling me, I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want a job. I don't want this. And they're telling me all the things they don't want. And I'll listen to them. And when they're done, I'll say, okay, that wasn't my question. My question was, what do you want? And, you know, many times they'll sit there and say, you know what? I don't know. I've never thought about that. I've been so angry at what I don't want in life, I've never really thought about what I want. And I'm like, well, you're going to get exactly what you don't want because that's what you're focused on. I, I had one of my coaches, uh, uh, he became a business partner of ours, Brad Sugar's his name. He, we sat down one day and he said, you know, Steve, he said, after you buy all the cool things in life, all the toys, everything, he said, start buying memories. He said, buy a concert in Wembley Stadium, buy Sunset on the Mediterranean in Greece. He said, buy the memories that the money gives you. Because he goes, you're just going to replace all the toys that you buy. And he said, I have a, a book of all the things I want to enjoy in my life. And these are all memories. And I thought, that's an interesting way to live. And I, and I do that now. I, I have a book and I write down the things that I would like to see, whether with my family, by myself, whatever it is, sunrise over Mount Fuji, whatever it is. I, these are things that I would like to experience. And that's not something money can buy. How did you actually get that narrowed focus so that you could be ultra successful in what you were wanting to do? The biggest success I had, believe it or not, was from my business coaches, not real estate coaches, mm -hmm. because I learned that it, whether you own a piece of real estate or you own a business or you own ownership and they're all run under the same chassis. And, you know, you have marketing, you have sales, you have operations, you have finance, IT, maybe HR, but if you don't understand those, at least the first four, the, the marketing, sales, operations, and finance, if you don't understand that, you're not going to have a successful rental property portfolio. You're not going to be able to advise people on a business. It, it goes on and on. 
that is the chassis that all, as, as you well know, that's the chassis that everything runs off of. So eventually you had to come up with a team. Um, yes. I presume you don't do this all by yourself. Uh, never met a successful entrepreneur who did everything by themselves. Um, yep. But how, uh, how have you gone about building your team? I started learning how to delegate my time because you, I, everybody, we have 24 hours in a day, no more, no less. How we utilize that time. And again, I'll go back to, to one of my coaches. We were sitting there one time and I was, he, he was on the board of 11 businesses and we were having lunch. And I said, how do you do this? I had one business and it was driving me crazy. And I said, how, how do you do this? And he said, it's a matter of saying no. He said, you have to say no more. And so we went on through this conversation and he said, you know, basically it's a matter of, of putting on blinders and being more focused. He's like, you say yes to everything, but you're really saying no to many more things. You just don't see them. And I said, well, that's easy for you. You know, you're this multimillionaire. You've got these businesses. And he said, you don't understand. I was never going to be this way until I started saying no. And that was kind of the moment that I thought, wow, that was that aha moment I had. And he said, until you start saying no, there's an opportunity cost for everything you do. So I started realizing, and what we started doing with our, with our property management company, which is a very time-intensive, employee-centric operation, because we're not selling a widget, we're selling services, we learned how to get very specific and how to outsource and leverage right person, right seat with our business to where we were able to bring our, our payroll costs down from 60% to 33%, which as you know, is a, is a, is a hard feat to do in a, a, a employee-centric operation because we started to understand the value of leverage and systemization, automation, um, and policies, procedures. And because of that, we were able to scale so much faster because we laid the groundwork and the funneling. There's a great quote from Warren Buffett that uh, he became a millionaire saying yes and became a billionaire saying no. Yes. Uh, and uh, that is, a, it's a hard thing to do. And, and I think once we realize that every time we say yes to one thing, we're saying no to something else. Uh, we are always making that decision. But what are the top three things? You, you're always talking about action. What are the top three actions you think people ought to take? Number one, you've got to have that end destination. It, it, it has to happen. Once you know your end destination, you have to create the strategy to get you there. It's kind of like if you want to go to Disneyland, you have to realize what freeways are going to get you to Disneyland. That's number two. And number three, uh, you have to take action. You have to walk out the door and get in your car to get there. It's never going to happen on the couch. And the biggest challenge is people talk themselves in and out of success every day because of what they think, as opposed to just taking action. Now, I don't like taking blind action. I think focused and intentional action. So you got to start with the end in mind. You always, just as you said, you've always got to start with the goal. You've got to create the strategy or the roadmap to reach that goal. And then you've got to get off the couch and take action. If you do those three things, 20 years from now, you'll be like me and say, you know what? I don't know how it happened, but it happened by taking action. And I mean, I, I know how it happened now, but at the time I was just taking action. I was doing what I was told. Um, if I could add a fourth, I would say surround yourself with mentors and coaches. That, that, that is the key. I would not be where I was had I not surrounded myself with people that could show me the path. Take control of your life. It is, it is your ability to create wealth um, that we're talking about because it's not that hard. Okay. This is the great thing. Anybody can do it. Even an airline pilot. Now, I'm just, I'm just kidding, Steve, but no, you're right. You're right. No, like, you're right. Anybody can do this. This, this, but there are fundamental principles. What Steve's described is a pattern that we seen work over and over and over again. And when you follow that pattern, when you get that great team around you, you're always going to make way more money and pay way less taxes. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye. You've been listening to The Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.